Here's a cool exercise that will teach you how to use structural beams in non-conventional ways, as well as using what I like to call sacrificial elements. So what I have here is a PDF of a structural bridge. And as you can see, there's an arched beam here, and that arched beam is actually tilting towards, towards us. So it's tilting away. So you've got these two arched beams that are tilting at a 70 degree angle. So I'm going to quickly show you how I created this. So what I have here is just a basic structural templates file. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a revolve. And what I need to do is use a work plane, so I just have a reference plane in here. I'm going to model in place. Use generic models. I'm going to call this sacrifice. So now I want to create a revolve. So I click revolve. Now we want to draw our boundary lines, but we want to be on that work plane that I set before. So we want to set work plane pick the plane and we're going to jump into the south elevation so now you can see we're in the south elevation here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an arch you could actually use an ellipse, you could use whatever you want actually, technically it's an ellipse so I'll actually use an ellipse to show you the extent of what it is I'm not going to do it exactly like the, like the drawing but I'll go out something like 43 feet I'll go up a little bit and now I'm going to use the split tool so I hit SL on the keyboard and I'm going to split this Then I'm going to draw a line across, and that's going to be the bottom of my sacrificial element. And I'm just going to trim this using TR on the keyboard. So now we've got this shape. Now what we're going to do is we're going to revolve this shape. If I go to my PDF, you can see the intersection point is actually 17 feet 4 inches below grade. And that's actually where you're going to revolve this shape. So I'm going to draw my axis line, and then I'm going to move it 17 feet 4 inches. So now we have, if I go to 3D, we'll show you again. So we have a profile and we have an axis and then we're going to revolve this shape. So I click finish. Now you can see what we did is we made our little olive here. But now if you notice on my PDF, we want one structural arch to be um, <clears throat> 20 degrees if you do 70 minus 90 there. So 20 degrees this way and 20 degrees that way of the neutral axis. So that's pretty easy here. If we have our end angle, we can say 20 degrees. And our start angle, we can say negative 20 degrees. And click Apply. Now you can see what we have here is a shape that we're going to use to draw our beams. Pretty cool. So let's click Finish Model. Now I'm going to go to Structure, and I'm going to select my beam. I'm just going to use whatever's default loaded into here. I could change it later, but we'll use a, 16, a W16 by 26. So now normally you'd say, all right, I'll just pick lines and I'll click this edge. Now look what happened. It put it on the work plane of the first floor. We don't want that. Let's delete this. And let's try this again. We'll click beam. Click pick lines. And now the trick here is if you select 3D snapping, the beam is actually going to follow the path of your element. So I'll click both sides. Now you'll notice for some reason the beam likes to flare out this way. But because we're using a structural beam and we're picking it, I can select both beams and I can actually rotate their cross-sectional rotation. Now that that's rotated, right now I'm going to hide my sacrificial element. And you can see we've got two structural beams that are following that plane. And what's awesome is they actually have their analytical model in here and they work just like any other structural beam. I can select it, I can change it to a hollow tube steel, and there you have it. Make sure you head on over to the RevitKid.com and download the sample file now.